Fasten your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen. This is the biggest thing to happen in the 2024 election. You're not going to want to miss this. Just on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Okay, now this right here, this is possibly the biggest news in the election. I know that's a crazy statement because we've already had some pretty insane moments, but it's not an exaggeration. I'm saying this literally. I think this is going to be possibly, because it's not absolutely confirmed yet, the biggest moment in this election. You know, just yesterday, we covered this clip from Nicole Shanahan. That's RFK Jr.'s running mates two options that we're looking at and one is staying in forming that new party but we run the risk of a kamala harris uh, kamala harris and and waltz uh presidency because we draw votes from trump or we draw somehow more votes from trump or we walk away right now and join forces with with Donald Trump. Now, of course, they didn't commit to joining up with Trump, but they kind of suggested it. Well, it seems like things are moving real fast, and now it might actually be happening. Nicole Shanahan went on Fox News yesterday and clarified her stance. And we are willing to work with anyone who is sincere in their endeavor to fix and address this issue. Do you believe the Trump campaign and Trump himself is sincere? Do you see a home? You talk about this as being Bobby's decision. Do you see a home for RFK Jr.? in the Trump administration, health and human services, something to that extent. I would fully support it. She said explicitly that she would support an RFK campaign team up with the Trump campaign. And now we're getting reports that RFK Jr. is going to address the nation on Friday. Are we seeing a correlation here? Is RFK Jr. going to announce that he's going to drop out of the race to take the fight to the totally undemocratic Democrat Party? I don't know, maybe, but I'll tell you, it certainly seems like that's the case. And if that's the case, this is absolutely, bar none, unequivocally the biggest story in politics right now. People are wondering whether RFK is that selfless enough to drop out and support Donald Trump, I think it's almost a 100% guarantee he is dropping out to support Donald Trump. And the reason being is that both of these men, RFK and Trump, they just love America. They want to do what's best for America. I can almost guarantee if the roles were reversed, Donald Trump only had 3% in the polls, RFK was 40%, and there was a risk for Kamala Harris presidency, Trump would do whatever it took to prevent that. And RFK, I believe, will do the exact same thing because these two men are patriots and Donald Trump is going to graciously accept him. I just know that's the type of person he is. He wants all hands on deck to rebuild this country. So I think this is going to be a fantastic partnership. So let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so you guys know the context because I just replayed the two clips. Well, like I mentioned earlier, things are moving quite fast. Take a look at these headlines. RFK Jr. plans speech on path forward amid talk of potentially backing Trump. Independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is set to make a campaign speech addressing, quote, his path forward on Friday. And this comes days after his running mate said the campaign faced a choice about staying in the 2024 election or dropping out to back Donald Trump. It's interesting, actually, if you put it that way. It's kind of true. Nicole Shanahan didn't present three options, dropping out and endorsing Trump and teaming up with Trump, or dropping out and endorsing Kamala Harris and teaming up with her team. She didn't say that. She only gave two options. So I guess we have a 50-50 here. They've essentially told us they're either going to drop out and not support Trump, or they're going to drop out and support him. Supporting Kamala Harris is totally off the table. Now, of course, there was the other option of getting 5% of the vote and possibly starting a new party, but really, I don't think that's a realistic approach at all. You know, RFK Jr. has been dropping in the polls. Obviously, the closer we get to Election Day, the more reality kicks in and people are just forced to have to pick between the two parties. And I think the RFK Jr. campaign understand that they're probably going to pull anywhere from like 2 to 3% of the vote, at least nationally, and possibly even less. And so really two options. And so obviously they need to think about this decision. And here's where I'm actually comfortable to make a prediction. I personally think they're going to endorse Donald Trump specifically because of this. We draw votes from Trump or we draw somehow more votes from Trump. I, I take more votes away from Trump than I do from Biden at this point. Mm -hmm. So we fold our own people and we take about 57 percent of the people who are our supporters who we poll say that if I drop out of the race, they'll vote for President Trump. They already know that their supporters split for Donald Trump. And so if they were to pull out of the race and not endorse Trump, the effect would most likely be beneficial towards Trump either way. And they understand this. So I guess the point that I'm trying to make is that obviously these two presidential campaigns and candidacies have a lot of voter crossover and also a lot of ideological crossover. And so in my mind, it simply makes sense. But of course, the most important thing, the most important link, the commonality between the Trump camp and the RFK Jr. camp that I think is most most important and most relevant here is their view on the preservation of American democracy and standing in the way of the weaponization of government and abuse of power. Here's a clip that was tweeted by Nicole Shanahan. 
I I think that it's a tight race right now. Yeah. Um, I I wish that we had had a chance to debate, that we had fair representation in the polls. I wish we had a chance to be on stage because had we we likely would have won this election. Yeah. You know, 71 percent of Americans want a strong third party option, and we delivered it in terms of ballot access. Yeah. Um, but they're suing us. The the DNC right. aligned PACs are suing us to get us off the ballots right now. These are frivolous lawsuits. We've had some of the best people involved in our ballot petitions, yeah. um, some of the most precise, you know, signature packages ever submitted to any of the Secretary of State's. I, we've overcome so much to yeah. get to this point. So to even be contemplating this is, is, is tough. It's a really hard decision, and we don't come to this moment lightly. She said if they were given a fair opportunity, they probably would have won the White House. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not ruling that out. They might have if they were giving a fair shot. But I'll tell you what right now, they got gypped. They were forced out of the Democratic primaries. The DNC wanted no part of RFK Jr. He posed such a threat to Joe Biden that they just forced him out. If this was a head-to-head -head election between RFK and Trump, I think that would be a coin toss. I genuinely don't know who would have won that election. I would have been polling for Trump, but I would have been happy regardless because I knew both candidates genuinely want the best for America. But that's not the case right now. This is Donald Trump versus a straight up communist. I think this is a clear cut election. So I do have a lot of respect for RFK because I know that he loves this country. And if he steps down to support Trump for the greater good, my respect will grow even more. Let's also go ahead and read Nicole Shanahan's tweet as she released this video on social media to hundreds of thousands of people. She writes, Trump has had six court battles to fight during this election, while we have had nine and counting across the country. By bringing these suits against political opponents, the Democrats bankrupt the underpinnings of democracy. What the Democrats consider common course to win elections is the kind of normalcy that leads to famine, sickness, and civil war. The country is ready for an administration that represents unity. I mean, I think it's pretty much over. An administration that represents unity. I can't think of something more uniting than Donald Trump absorbing some of the RFK people into his administration. I mean, that alone would be an incredible symbol of unity. Now, I know, I know, many people would have concerns, but he's not a conservative, therefore he shouldn't be in a conservative administration. First of all, I completely disagree with that. You can have people with different ideologies serving in your administration. You just have to be smart about who it is and what position you're putting said person in. It is a completely ridiculous opinion to only have conservatives in your cabinet. Abraham Lincoln stacked his cabinet with his staunchest rivals because he wanted to hear different opinions. That's the way you got to go. And having RFK in Donald Trump's cabinet would be a dream come true for America because it would unite us in a way that our country has not seen in over two decades. My only question is, where do you throw RFK Jr.? Do you put him as the head of the CIA, FBI, or do you put him in charge of the medicine and CDC? Honestly, the options are endless. I personally would like to see him heading up the CIA, but I want to know, what would you do? Would you accept RFK? Would you reject it? And if you accepted his endorsement, where are you going to put him in your cabinet? I would love to hear that. And also, were any of you guys going to vote for RFK Jr.? But now that he's dropping out, you're going to vote for Trump? Let me know. I'd love to hear if Trump got any more converts. And if you enjoyed, make sure to smash that like, comment, subscribe. And I wish you guys nothing but the best. Till next time.